Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Two heavyweight prospects who have had a healthy dose of hype in 2020 are back in the ring this weekend. And of course I'm talking about the Croatian heavyweight prospect Alan Babic and also the Italian prospect Guido Vianello. I'll start with Babic first who's appearing on a card headlined by Joshua Boazzi in the United Kingdom and this is a Sunday card so something a little bit different. He will be facing the 36 year old Irishman Niall Kennedy. Kennedy has a record of 13-1-1. One. And in terms of Alan Babich, he's heading into this with a record of 4-0. and oh. So I guess just to step back for a second, this is um, another opportunity where Alan Babich will look to capitalise on his burgeoning profile. Because it's fair to say, ahead of the August 22nd fight against Shondell Winters, not too many people really knew who he was. There was a number of fans who you know, knew that he'd been training with Dillian White, giving him a bit of sparring work, but really hadn't seen too much of him. And that's because he'd only had the three fights, and two of them had been off in Italy, sort of out of sight, out of mind. The other one was from about a year ago. It was on a Dillian White undercard, but most people had largely forgotten that. But his performance against Winters really announced himself to the heavyweight division because he went into that. He's uh, with this whole savage persona that he's uh, developing. He is called Alan the Savage Babich, but he is channeling the savage, as it were. And we've seen this in a number of social media posts in this past week or so. But um, he was chatting a lot of uh, stuff ahead of that fight against Winters. Winters and then he backed it up he said he was just going to go in there and blitz Shondell Winters and he delivered and did so in style really just um, Winters never knew what hit him because uh, from the first bell he came forward he was looking for big punches he he found them and ultimately he took Winters out of there in a couple of rounds and since then there's been a lot more people saying the name Alan Babich talking about him either you know headlines from the media or people discussing him on social media comment sections etc all that sort of good stuff so his profile got a massive boost as a result of being on that high profile card but he also delivered in a high profile way and he'll be looking to do so again on this Joshua Boazzi card which again will have a number of people watching it and he's facing a guy and I think it's quite good matchmaking so Alan Babich is a smaller heavyweight but uh, you've got Niall Kennedy who's uh, a few inches taller but there is a question about the durability. And if you look at uh, Niall Kennedy's record, he's coming into this fight off a loss. And that loss was to Devin Vargas. Devin Vargas is a sort of top 50, top 60 level guy, a gatekeeper sort of opponent. He either fights uh, prospects who are sort of at a certain point in their development, or he's being brought in as a tune-up, say for a guy like uh, two years ago, Andy Ruiz Jr., who was, uh, maybe it was three years ago, coming off uh, a loss against Joseph Parker, had been out of the ring for a year or so. He fought Devin Vargas and had a good tune-up against him. So Vargas is a guy who, if you're not good enough, he will um, sort of uh, stop you and in the case of Niall Kennedy, he did. So I think there is some questions here with the durability of Niall Kennedy. And this is probably factored into the matchmaking. They wanted to bring in a guy who was a bit bigger than um, Alan Babich. Because obviously uh, in the heavyweight division, most of the guys that he's going to be fighting at any real level in the heavyweight division are 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and above. Alan Babich is a bit of a smaller heavyweight, around 6'1". He's also sort of, uh, in terms of the weight range, his last fight he was uh, 206. So he probably could have made um, cruise weight and even uh, previous fights he's you know sort of under 220 not a massive heavyweight but he comes with bad intent he looks to let his hands go and he's uh, stated he's got the strategy of three rounds or bust that he's really just going to try go in there and bust you up and I think this is going to be another opportunity where he's going to look to do that. We've heard from Niall Kennedy in the past couple of weeks that he believes that uh, Alan Babich is in fact a stepping stone for him, which will lead him to bigger and better fights and subsequently paydays, etc. But I would say that um, Alan Babich does go in the favourite here. And if there is a question about uh, Niall Kennedy's durability, then um, certainly Alan Babich, if he can get to the inside and start you know, landing to the body and head, we're certainly going to find out quickly how durable Kennedy is but I would be sort of leaning towards a stoppage for Alan Babich probably under sort of three rounds uh, but it's going to be interesting 
What if Niall Kennedy is able to uh, manage him with the jab and keep him, keep on the outside, manage to stay away from too many big shots, not take too much damage? And if Alan Babich sort of blows his wad, goes for more than three rounds, what happens? Because eventually that's going to happen at some point. Maybe this is, isn't the fight, but maybe we'll, we will get a little inkling of that. I don't know, because I think if he continues the sort of high pressure, high volume, you know, swing for the fences, everything into every punch, at some point someone is just going to be able to uh, to take that, manage him effectively, especially if they've got good skills, good movement, they can use the ring, they can certainly counter punch, that sort of thing, because Alan Babich is there to be hit when he is swinging for the fences. I'm not so sure that Niall Kennedy is the one to expose any flaws in his game and potentially either gas him out and stop him or just catch him with something early and take him out. But uh, obviously there's questions there for bigger and better fights. But if he can manage to get past the Irishman and look good in the process, it's certainly going to add to the sort of uh, social media sort of buzz and hype and the general sort of uh, tenor of the um, positiveness that is uh, sort of around Alan Babich after that August the 22nd fight. So it could be another good momentum builder. And I think there will be a number of uh, people continuing to talk about this guy and what he might be able to do in the heavyweight division. Ultimately, too early to tell for me, I think that uh, someone at some point is going to either knock him out or, you know, potentially gas him out and then, you know, either outpoint him, take him out later in the fight, whatever, you know, they'll be able to land counter punches on him. But you can guarantee whatever fight he is in with the sort of three rounds or bust strategy, Alan Babich is going to be fun to watch. So I'm looking forward to seeing this fight. Not sure that Niall Kennedy is the one to sort of expose any flaws or be the one to sort of beat him or stop him. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have to reserve judgment, but definitely picking an Alan Babich win here. We'll see how it goes. In the other fight of the weekend, because this is quite a light weekend, we actually have uh, Guido Vianello. He's in the top rank bubble. He's going to be facing King. Kingsley Ibert. And actually, these two were meant to have fought a while back in the bubble, the top rank bubble, but then Ibert got uh, coronavirus. So they had to uh, cancel that. Guido Vianello went back to Italy because he had been in the United States through the uh, sort of lockdown period, etc., and then went on to uh, fight in the top rank bubble. But obviously, um, Ibert pulled out. So they've had re basically rescheduled it. And this is a minor step up for Guido Vianello. And I'll be interested to sort of see how he can handle the, the first couple of rounds in particular, because from what we've seen of Kingsley Ibear, he's had a couple of fights in the bubble, in particular against um, a decent prospect last time out, a New Zealand heavyweight prospect, Patrick Mylata, who's a former Commonwealth Games uh, bronze medalist. He's got good skills and ability, but uh, in a short, it was either four or six rounds, but I think it was six rounds, um, against Kingsley Ibear, he just didn't start fast enough, and Kingsley Ibear basically the first couple of rounds through activity and just letting his hands go was able to sort of take those rounds and then as the fight progressed my Lata seemed to be gassing a bit. Um, Kingsley Ibear, uh, basically after the end of the third round, looked spent. But he, were, he was able to just sort of keep coming, even though he was sort of um, a bit ragged and sloppy. Um, but uh, My Lata wasn't throwing enough punches and clearly gassing himself. Ultimately, it was a pretty close fight in the end, but the decision went the way of Kingsley Ibear. So he gave the first loss to Patrick Mylata. So I'll be interested to see how Vianello deals with those couple of early rounds because I think he's uh, certainly got enough in his toolbox to uh, easily outbox uh, Kingsley Ibear. And I think he will maybe start a little bit slower than he has against some of the lower level opposition that he's faced in his career to date. And at this point, Guido Vianello is at uh, seven and O. Oh, so he's at the point where he's taking these incremental step ups Ibert represents that step up that he needs until he takes the next little one. Um, but I do think he is going to win this fight. I think for the first couple of rounds, he'll just sort of see off any sort of uh, wild swinging from Ibert and pick him apart. I think um, ultimately he could end up getting a stoppage here. This is scheduled for six rounds, but he definitely, I think, is going to outpoint Kingsley Ibear. But it would be good to see a bit of pressure applied early from Ibear as he has in other fights, just to see how Vianello handles it. Because so far, Vianello has basically had everything his own way in his pro career.
So it's good to see some of these young prospects or, you know, prospects early in their careers get something a, a little bit sort of curly so they can deal with it. And then obviously it's good experience for the future. And we can sort of see how they deal with certain pressures and situations. But he is going to get a win here, Guido Vianello, for me. But it could be a fun, entertaining fight, especially in those early rounds if Kingsley Ibear is really letting his hands go, as we've seen in the past uh, couple of fights in the top rank bubble. So I think this will be the third fight for both in the top rank bubble. But uh, what do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.